your life. As an update for animal control uh, for the month of March, um, Bloomfield reported that we had 16 animal control calls that they responded to. Uh, most of them are domestic. Some of them were injured in sick wildlife. That was five. We did have a raccoon that we had to, um, had to address uh, with them. So they do do a whole variety of things for us. Total bite investigations that Bloomfield investigated was one but our um, REHS staff have also investigated um, three other bite investigations involving uh, domestic animals. So that is the report from Bloomfield. As for community uh, communicable and infectious diseases, our um, current influenza activity level throughout the state is low, which is timely and appropriate for the month of April and going into May. As for our March COVID-19 stats, you'll see that there are 32 cases. So that's 32 uh, lab reported cases. We've had no reports or just one report of a home test. Uh, we still encourage people to do the home test and I'll get back to that um, in later um, slides. Uh, but our total cases are 7,836. This is concurrent with what we see across the state, which is our COVID-19 community transmission levels are also low throughout the entire state. So we are moving all in the right direction. Of course, our variants are still constantly changing. So with those lab reports, we are seeing different types of Omicron subvariants as we would expect to see, and they are monitoring that at the state level. Despite the fact that our numbers are going down, the way that they stay down is by continuing to get our vaccinations. So just wanna promote again that we have a COVID-19 booster vaccination available for our homebound residents, and that's for free. And you can contact the health department to schedule that. As for home tests, home tests are still free. I do want to emphasize, though, that um, in May, uh, they, there is going to be a change because the public health emergency has changed. So while you still have them available, please uh, order your free COVID-19 tests. Uh, you can order four rapid COVID-19 tests uh, per New Jersey resident to your home address, and they're still for free. So while you're still able to get it, please uh, go to their website, or you can order the kit by calling the number here. We also have some free ones available in town for those um, who have difficulty contacting the state. Just want to also let you know about a communicable and infectious disease, measles. So not measles in, in um, Maplewood per se, but there was a confirmed measles case recently in New Jersey. Uh, the incubation period has now ended and there was only one case, but this bodes uh, for the importance of getting vaccinated, especially for the susceptible groups, anyone born since 1957 who was not vaccinated with the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, infants who are too young to be vaccinated, so those are infants who are 11 months of, of, of age and younger. Uh, people who are vaccinated around 1963 to 1967 with an inactivated vaccine, unvaccinated individuals and immunocompromised individuals. And I'd also say those who work like healthcare providers who work with um, people in the hospital and healthcare setting. So again, the important thing for all of us is to get vaccinated for all of our vac vaccine-preventable diseases, such as measles, which we think have disappeared, but they, they're not um, still around, unfortunately. Yes, ma'am. If you've had the measles, does that count as a vaccine? Yes. If you've had the measles, you will be able to, if you're exposed to someone with measles, it will kick in, your immunity will kick in. However, it's always just still good to get the vaccine if, um, you know, you talk to your healthcare provider and they say you're of age to, you know, boost up your immune system, it would do that. Especially if you know you're going to come in contact or travel to a place that has a lot of uh, measles cases, okay. it still get it. Um, as for our environmental health, um, our inspectors have done 11 restaurant inspections, our school inspections, daycare inspections. All this just to give you an idea of all the things that we do at the health department, um, animal bites, complaints from the community, and notice of violations, which is what the NOVs are. Notice of violations are kind of just like a warning to people to help abate and remediate any environmental issues. And most of those have already been abated and the community's been compliant. 
uh, as for environmental health, it's probably a good place for me to jump off and say that our interlocal agreement with Maplewood and South Orange uh, passed at the last South Orange meeting, so our um, interlocal agreement is effective as of April 1st of this month. And that is the end of my presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions for Ms. Davenport? No. Okay, we'll open up to the public. Does anybody in the public have questions for Ms. Davenport? And we don't have the email functioning then, or do we have no, email? We don't. All right. So, um, seeing no one, I move that we adjourn to the next scheduled meeting on Tuesday, May 2nd at 7.30. Second. So, Adams. Yes. Right. Yes. Mayor Davis. Yes. Mr. DeLuca. Yes. Ms. Engel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Health Officer Davenport. Moving on to ordinances on final passage, item 7A, ordinance number 3091-23. So Mayor, on final passage, ordinance number 3091-23. It's an ordinance granting a tax exemption with respect to certain property identified on the township's tax maps, block 16.01, lot 32, and designated in the township tax records as 7 Parker Avenue West, Maplewood, New Jersey, and authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with 7 Parker West Urban Renewal LLC. This ordinance will grant to 7 Parker Avenue West a payment in lieu of taxes agreement pilot. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in municipal buildings and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. This ordinance is having a second public hearing due to being amended at the March 21st meeting. Uh, at this point, I open it up to members of the public for comments. John Denon. It's good. You're good. You just got to lean into it. I'm sorry. No, it's not on. It's no, working. You just got to lean into it a little bit. Uh, I don't think so. I think Candace turned it off when she finished her report. Oh, she turned it off? I think it's on. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> I just want to echo some of the uh, points that Aaron Scherzer made at the last meeting here where this was uh, brought up and discussed. First of all, I don't think the Township Committee is taking into consideration the uh, influx of traffic that's going to be involved in this intersection. I know my, I have two daughters, well, one just graduated, but one's a junior at uh, Columbia High School. And I drop my other daughter off at Our Lady of Sorrows and each day drive by this corner of Valley <clears throat> and Parker. And the traffic is horrible. And not only that, but you have students standing on this corner. And then you have the YMCA right across the street. There's going to, this is gonna be a bottleneck in the morning and in the evening. In addition, the developer is a for-profit company. They were well aware that Gleason's was a dry cleaner, that, as Mayor Daffa said last time, toxic chemicals have been uh, utilized for years, and for the township to give them the benefit that is not being given to other people similarly situated that live in that area is unfair and unjust. And I would ask that you vote this down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. That was John Sullivan for the record. Any other members of the public? Seeing none, I will close the public. Hearing any remarks or comments from the governing body. I, I just would say because 
this traffic issue has come up before, and while I'm, I understand it, um, I think this will actually, maybe because I remember Gleason's being open and active, and the traffic then was um, decidedly worse because it was an active retail establishment. Um, and this is um, transit-oriented development with um, presumably people, you know, the presumption is people will live there in order to commute, um, and some of the benefits that we're getting out of it is improving that pedestrian walkway to get to the train station. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to address the traffic part. Any other comments? Yeah, I just want to um, make sure we understand that there is a precedent for um, providing a tax abatement when there is significant environmental cleanup. Um, three previous tax abatements that we've provided, and we haven't provided that many. Uh, one is Maplewood Crossing, which was a universal chain before, and the, the contamination there was atrocious. The other was Avalon, which was the public service uh, property, which had uh, significant um, contamination from, it was a gas testing site, and they had a lot of stuff going on there. And of course, Toomey's was the last one. So this is consistent with that. We do recognize the inherent benefit of having toxic sites cleaned up and made productive and put on the tax rolls for a higher amount. So I think this is something we've done in the past and I'm for it going forward. Any other comments from my colleagues? Yeah, I mean, I've made uh, extensive comments about this. Um, and I agree with Mr. DeLuca in terms of uh, precedent, but more importantly, we, we want to clean up toxic sites and we want to develop them, uh, otherwise they're going to stay toxic and become even more toxic. Uh, and this is an opportunity to actually bring the property onto the tax rolls, right? Uh, and again, we shared the financial agreement and we shared the data and the numbers with the public showing that we will, at the end of the day, end up making more revenue through this arrangement. Uh, and let's not forget that we're providing more housing opportunity. We know that we need more housing, um, and the developer is truly not a nonprofit, uh, but the developer is a local resident and a man of color, which is not something that you say often or see in development circles, and I uh, am fortunate to be uh, on panels for economic development and redevelopment. Certainly as mayor, I've been able to attend, and you look out there, you see the people talking, you see the people listening, you see the people developing New Jersey, and they don't look like our local resident. So all things considered, I think this is a fair arrangement. Uh, I will be moving it. I move this ordinance to be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. All right. Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. And the accompanying resolution 114-23, the redevelopment. Uh, yes, Mayor, it's resolution designated 7 Parker Avenue West Urban Renewal LLC and redevelopment of 7 Parker Avenue West. I move the adoption of resolution 114-23 designating 7 Parker West Urban Renewal LLC and redevelopment of 7 Parker Avenue West. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Greit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Zengel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Resolution number, okay, we just did that. Introduction of ordinances. Uh, an ordinance designating permit parking for Maplewood Middle School employees. Uh, yes, Mayor, that's item 9A, ordinance 3092-23. It's an ordinance designating permit parking for Maplewood Middle School employees. This ordinance will designate certain spaces located on Donnell Road for Maplewood Middle School employee parking school days from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on April 18th, 2023. I second the motion. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. Luca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. Item 9B. Uh, yes, Mayor. Ordinance 3093-23, also an introduction. An ordinance to authorize the installation of stop signs on Jefferson Avenue. This ordinance will authorize the installation of stop signs on Jefferson Avenue at the intersection of Maplewood Avenue, Woodland Road, and Walton Road. I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading, its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on Tuesday, April 18th, 2023. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Angle? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. Item 9C? Also an introduction. Ordinance 3094-23. Calendar year 2023 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank per NJSA 48-4 dash 45.14, and the interpretive statement is cap ordinance. I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading, its publication according to law in, Ma in the Maplewood South Orange News Record, and a hearing to be held on April 18th. I second it. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Bright? Yes. Mr. Bluka? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. And this brings us to the introduction of our 2023 budget. Very exciting. Uh, before we get to item 10A, uh, resolution 114-23, uh, introducing our 2023 municipal budget, I wanted to make uh, a few comments about it. Uh, we've had several public workshops on time, and uh, we had a very good discussion last time about our budget preceding introduction tonight. So I want to kind of summarize where we are and what kind of budget is this budget that we're introducing on behalf of the township this evening. As we came out of the pandemic, we saw a lot of our revenues that help us hold down taxes still performing below pre-pandemic levels. Our jitney and parking revenue is down $54,000. Our off-duty police administration fees down $24,000. Our municipal court costs and fines down $96,000. In terms of loss of revenue as well, we've seen significant loss of revenue in terms of state aid. The state ended the municipal tax relief fund costing us $95,000. The state continues not to fund the energy receipts tax reform commitment that they made. In 2023, for Maplewood, that means $100,000 less in revenue. Overall, we have been shorted over $1.9 million. Last year, we used about $480,000 in American Rescue Plan money to balance our budget. But we have since recognized the need to wean ourselves off of one-time revenue tricks if we are to have an honest and sustainable budget. And of course, there have been the expenditures beyond our control that increased significantly. Pension obligations jumped 16%, costing us $795,000 more than last year. Health benefits, and we've talked a lot about health benefits, and we've advocated for a solution, and we were rejected. Health benefits rose over 25%, costing us $851,000 more than last year. 
Our insurance policy premiums rose over 14%, increasing by $128,000. Our interest payments on notes due to rising interest rates spiked to $576,000 more than last year. In order to balance the budget, the tax rate that we originally were considering should have gone up by 5.3%. But we know that our budget is a reflection of our residents' budgets. We are all hurting. They are hurting. The township is hurting as we step into a post pandemic world. We were considering a 2% increase, which would have required financial decisions that only kicked the can down the road again. That meant continuing to use one-time revenue sources like American Rescue Plan money, which is no longer coming in, and spending, even more critically important, spending $1.1 million of our fund balance. That's rainy day fund money, leaving us vulnerable to future tax spikes to pay for unexpected emergencies and increasing future interest costs as overuse of fund balance hurts our credit rating and gets us higher interest rates. A budget is a tool to achieve our goals and fund our values. This budget strikes a balance between addressing our structural deficiencies, as just enumerated, and maintaining our services that we know are important to us, and doing so in a fiscally responsible way. We're keeping the tax rate increase below 3.5, despite costs that rose 5.3%. We're avoiding kicking the can down the road mentality, that is using more and more of American rescue money as operating revenue. The using, we want to use our American rescue money for stormwater and sanitary sewer upgrades. That's what it was provided to municipalities for, to eliminate future interest costs in future budgets. Maintaining a healthy fund balance to position us for favorable interest rates and to weather emergencies. We have to have a rainy day fund. Establishing a fund to allow us flexibility to permanently finance three years of notes, potentially this year, and preparing ourselves for unexpected consequences of a re-evaluation that will take effect next year. So, in summary, is this a perfect budget? <laughs> no, it isn't. But it is an honest budget that brings us closer to sustainability. It does not drain our emergency funds. It's a budget that takes a multi-year approach to address our issues in a fiscally responsible manner. It is a solid foundation that prepares us for the challenges both next year and in future years ahead. And it continues to deliver the services that we value and that our community depends on. In 2019, 6.4% rate increase, increase. In 2020, 3.1% rate increase, deliberately held down because of the pandemic. In 2021, a 7.2% rate increase to catch up for what we did the year before. In 2022, a 5.3% rate increase. 
again, artificially low, using American Rescue Plan money. In 2023, a 3.4% rate increase. Sincere, fiscally responsible. So with that, Ms. Fritzen, item 10A is resolution 114-23. Yes, Mayor. Uh, introduction of the 2023 municipal budget. And I need to uh, just read a, a couple of things further with the municipal budget notice. Uh, municipal budget of the Township of Maplewood, County of Essex for the fiscal year 2023. Be it resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the municipal budget for the year 2023. You're further resolved that said budget to be published in the Maplewood South Orange news record issue of April 13th, 2023. The governing body of the Township of Maplewood does hereby approve the following as the budget for the year 2023. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax resolution were approved by the committee persons of the Township of Maplewood County of Essex on April 4th, 2023. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at the Township of Maplewood, Maplewood Municipal Building on May 2nd, 2023 at 7.30 o'clock p.m., at which time and place objections to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2023 may be presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. May you move that? Thank you, Ms. Fritzen. I'm gonna move the adoption resolution 114-23, introducing our 2023 municipal budget. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Kreit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Engel? Yes. Mayor Davis? Yes. Thank you. And just for the public's edification, uh, I meant to include this in my remarks earlier. Uh, we had some discussion about making further cuts, and we made further cuts, uh, but we did not cut the jitney. So uh, that was something that we talked about here. The jitney is unaffected. And um, oh, July 4th, we made, uh, we put a, a little bit of money aside for fireworks for July 4th and that also survived the budget. So uh, we want people out there to, to know that those things did uh, survive. So, uh, so thank you with that. All right, uh, administrative reports, and we'll start with <clears throat> Interim Administrator Schuster. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor. I won't talk uh, any more about the budget uh, other than to say that um, I do appreciate all the hard work from uh, all the staff that was involved in getting this uh, to this point, uh, especially I'd like to point out uh, CFO Joe Cologe, as well as Assistant Administrator uh, Bailey Barnett. Uh, it's been a team process to get this where we are. Uh, obviously, we're not at the end yet. There still is a little bit more process according to state statute, which Ms. Fritzen just read off, uh, but uh, looking forward to finishing that up. Uh, the next thing that I'll report is uh, news about our health insurance broker. As the mayor highlighted, one of the issues we're facing, many municipalities are facing, is the skyrocketing uh, cost of health insurance for those that are remaining in the stealth, uh, state uh, health care uh, plan. Um, a recommendation was made to the finance subcommittee on a broker uh, after we uh, received seven proposals and interviewed five. Uh, we look forward to bringing that recommendation at the next township meeting uh, on the uh, 18th for ratification. Uh, also brought to the finance subcommittee was a firm uh, to conduct the salary survey uh, that uh, we've been looking to do for, uh, for, uh, for a few months now. Um, that recommendation, if approved by the TC, would move us forward into looking at the positions um, identified and calculating appropriate salary ranges. Uh, there's also uh, finances in the budget uh, that's uh, been noticed uh, to go ahead and implement a portion of this. We don't know how much would be able to be rectified at first. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the study is, but at least we'll be able to take a first step uh, towards implementing uh, uh, the findings. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, I do want to say that uh, this evening will be uh, Ms. Barnett's last township committee meeting with all of us. 
Uh, we're very sad to see her go. Uh, she'll be moving on to her next opportunity. Uh, we, of course, wish her all the best uh, at that uh, opportunity. Uh, she's been incredibly helpful to me when I walked uh, into the door, uh, knew basically where everything was, where to go ahead and ask the questions, get the answers, and I really couldn't have done this uh, without her. So I really do appreciate uh, her efforts here, and I sincerely want to wish her well uh, at her next opportunity. So thank you, Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Are there any questions for Interim Administrator Schuster? Okay, we're gonna turn it over then to Assistant Administrator Barnett. Thank you, so as Interim Administrator Schuster said, this will be my last Township Committee meeting. Uh, I'll also keep it short, but I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity that I've had here for the past two years. I think I got a lot of great experience here. It was really quite the opportunity. I've learned a lot and it's been great working with you all, so thank you. Uh, just to wrap up some of the other items that we've been working on, uh, just to let everybody know, there is going to be a canned food drive for the community fridge coming up on April 21st. That's gonna be in the town hall entrance, so bring some canned food and help us stock the fridge for our neighbors. As Health Officer Davenport reported, uh, the Mayor's Wellness Campaign, the Health Department, and the SOMA Two Towns for All Ages are working to put on a conversation of your life movie showing of a man called Otto, and that's gonna be a discussion with, again, free movie, popcorn, there's gonna be a door prize, it'll be a good time, so that is gonna be on May 15th. We have more information published online. Uh, we also, I also wanna report that the Community Board on Police published their annual report in draft format, and that's going to be circulated this week through the Township eBlast, and they're going to be discussing it at their next meeting and accepting comments. And then last announcement is that we have a change in our smoke detector and carbon monoxide uh, alarm inspection process. So that was previously under the fire department. Now it's under our fire prevention bureau since the South Essex Fire Department was formed. And we'll be, we'll be taking uh, reservations for that through the GovPilot software. And again, this is all available on the website. And this is my shameless plug to sign up for our e-blasts and our SMS messaging where you can find all of these announcements and so much more. The SMS sign up information is located in the header of the home webpage. And one last time, I'd just like to thank everyone for the past two years. Thank you, Ms. Barnett. Any uh, comments for my colleagues? Just on the, uh, on the community board on police, the annual report, we said that we would send a copy to each township committee member, and if they want to review it and give us either the mayor or myself comments, we'll bring them back to the community board on police. So we're trying to look at this report before it gets made public. It's in draft form now, but before it gets filed. So if you could send each of us a copy of that. Thank you. Sounds good. Any comments? For my colleagues? I just want to thank Ms. Barnett for all of your hard work here in Maplewood. It's been an honor to work with you. Good thank luck you. in everything. Thank you. Does this mean we're not invited to the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Nancy wants cake. Y'all know where to find me. It's across the street. <laughs> Are you still having it there? That's yeah. great. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Deposits have been made. <laughs> Godspeed on your next uh, cool. position, and thank you for everything you've done for this township. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Barnett, I also echo those remarks. We want to thank you for your great service to our residents uh, and to all of our volunteers and all of our boards and committees and for shepherding us through um, all of our meetings during COVID online. You've been tremendous, and we wish you great success in your future endeavors. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Next, we have uh, Mr. Desiderio. Thank you, Mayor. I actually have, actually have one, I actually have one thing. Uh, Mayor, there's a property located at uh, 317 Wyoming Avenue, and there's a there are several trees that are uh, on the property that are a danger to uh, adjoining properties. Uh, the tree specialist has rendered uh, or opined uh, that these trees should come down. Um, and um, I'm sorry, Ms. Adams, are you, this news to you? 
Yes. Okay, I apologize. Um, and uh, we notified the uh, notified the property owner that they should uh, uh, come and um, apply for permits, et cetera. No answer, no response. They've been generally unresponsive. So pursuant to uh, uh, ordinances, the township has the ability to take down, especially in emergent situations, uh, situations like this, board up houses, et cetera, and then to add the cost back into the tax uh, bills uh, that go for the property. To that end, uh, Ms. De Palma's uh, department uh, has secured a uh, proposal from Rich Tree Service in the amount of $4,850. So what we're asking is that you authorize, pursuant to the ordinance, the expenditure of that month to take down the trees and to uh, then bill it back through the tax department um, and uh, charge the property owner for that. Now, I apologize. Ms. Adams is just seeing for the first time these reports. So I don't know what the process has otherwise been. So I was just asked to give the report and to ask for your authorization to have Rich Tree Service move forward. And this is two trees, not? Two trees, two. One, one on each one. side, Ms. Adams, that are affecting, I think, each of the uh, property owners on either side. And was this a result of the 20-something trees that were illegally taken down by the new house? I don't have that answer, Ms. Adams. I'm sorry. Good. So do we have to follow the tree ordinance on this, or is this des we designating this as well, an the, emergency? The, the, our tree expert is the one who says they have to come down. Well, I understand that, but it also and the home And the two adjoining property owners are requesting that. <laughs> right, but there's a whole process. They have to, so we've, we've notified them and they've, they've waived their right of appeal. Yes. Okay. Well, I would move it. Could I just ask another question? You, I feel like this, um, I mean, I'm fine with billing. I'm just not sure we're bill billing the right one. And we're passing a resolution tonight to hire a new tree expert, arborist, right? Yes. So yes. before we do any of that, I'd like the new person to look at this as well, especially since I'm concerned about who we're billing here. I'm not so sure that I. I I'd like to know whether or not the decline in a couple of these trees is due to the destruction on the neighboring property when the house went in. I mean, they went through the courts and were fined for all those trees that they removed without permits. Um, but I'd like to know whether or not it's because of that removal and the, and the um, destruction of the property to build a new house, whether or not that impacted because the 12-inch red maple seems like it might have been impacted by that, in which case I'd rather bill the person who affected the root system that this is talking about. Well, this is, uh, my understanding is that's who's being built, is the owner of that property at 317 Wyoming. Is that the new, that's where the new house is? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's what I understand with regard to that. If you, if you want the new person, that's a, that's a I separate. wouldn't mind the, the new arborist taking a look at it, but other than that, after Given that. How about how about if I amend my motion to approve this subject to a review by the new arborist? Yeah. yeah. So that we don't have to wait another two weeks in yeah, case this, we want to get this down. Right. All right. I'm sorry. Just just one clarification, Mr. Luca. So if the new arborist renders a report consistent with the old arborist and we supply that, then yes, they're okay to, to take that's, the trees. That's down. my motion. Okay. Just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, okay. And it needs to be seconded. I'll second it. Ms. Adams? Yes. Wright? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Sangal? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Anything else, Mr. Desdario? That's all I have, Mayor. Any um, questions for Mr. Desdario? Okay. We'll move over to Ms. Fritzen. Well, first I want to thank you all for uh, this shocking surprise tonight. And I had a chance to read the proclamation because when you were reading it, Mayor, it was just, uh, you know, so, I don't know, it, it really is beautifully written. I thank you all for um, what you said about me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I, I, you know, I continue to love my job, and um, I'm just taken back by the end. I really appreciate it. We love you, Liz. We love you, Liz. We, we do. We love you, Liz. Everybody, you, Liz. everybody should have the kind of career I've had, okay? I thank mean it. See what you're um, missing, Valley. So uh, just a couple of things on business. We have uh, business. seven 
event planning meetings coming up because we have large events that are all scheduled. Seven. Yep. And uh, we're also taking uh, applications for the uh, cafes and the streeteries and uh, moving those forward. And then I did remind the township committee and mayor that you uh, had a dedication on Saturday for uh, 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 the bench for Carol and Farina, something that, you know, we've been planning uh, with Mr. Strupp mostly all winter. Yeah. So that'll be happening. I appreciate Ms. Kripe is definitely uh, able to go. That, that's super. Um, and then, you know, Bailey, I want to wish you good luck. You really have helped me. There were times when, you know, I was staffless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you helped me with agendas and the new process and all the uh, things for the website. And uh, I really appreciate um, everything that you've done to educate me. I learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what? And I still want to learn. But it was the agenda you know that was really like uh, pulling teeth for a while. <laughs> and now it's smooth and Amari can, you know, picks right up on it. He wrote the book on that agenda. Not kidding. True. Um, so everything that you've shown me to make uh, the clerk's office more proficient, things easier, uh, I really, really appreciate it. And I wish you would have stayed longer than two years. But I understand and I wish you luck um, in everything you do in your new endeavor. So thank you. And that's all I have, Mayor. I do have a... Sure. One item. Uh, Memorial Day Parade. Let's get... You are right. reading my mind because I, I'm telling you, I, I was thinking about it last night. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And we won't... Well, it took a while because I thought about it tonight, so you must have sent it. I thought about <laughs> it last night. And I couldn't sleep. I yeah. About and it. I think I got it today. Thank okay. you. Yes. But yes, we, uh, we should start planning it. We'll certainly uh, be planning a lot sooner than we did last year. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Okay, we're going to move over to reports from elected officials, and we'll start with Deputy Mayor Engel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I first just want to mention that I am deeply disappointed that we can't seem to get our technology in order to make this um, an interactive meeting with the public. I was never able to attend a township committee meeting until 2020 when the shutdowns happened and they went remote, and I haven't missed that many since. And I'm very um, disappointed that our residents can't um, participate and be here and hear these wonderful tributes we're making um, or hear our um, health inspector and see her PowerPoint back and just be in the room. Um, even since we've been live, I haven't seen that many people who are like me, um, younger mothers. I haven't seen seniors here who are very engaged. And so I just want to figure out a way to fix this or perhaps discuss going back to virtual. Um, but as for reports, um, at Environmental Commission, we've been talking about the Greenway, which I'm very excited about. And um, myself and Karen Hilton from South Orange and Nubia Deval Wilson from the Board of Ed and um, Paul Kinder, our engineer, are going to take a walk to see if we can start getting a Greenway in Maplewood going again. So more to come on that. Um, pool registration is open, so I hope everybody is um, signing up. And the MVA is going to be closing the streets, as we discussed last time. Um, Fridays and Saturdays from 4 to 9 with a shorter season from June till September. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Deputy Mayor Engel? Just on the, um, the, the uh, river walk, um, the agreement we passed tonight for the 7 West Parker mm -hmm. has that component. They, the developer is going to improve the section of the walk between uh, Jefferson and Parker. Yep. So um, you ought to make sure that you have, uh, and maybe Ms. De Palma has actual pictures. She does. She yeah, has so a, make a sure plan. you yeah. connect with her so that you know what the plan is. We will. Yeah, I think the issue previously has been that the school district owns some of the property. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have to get their buy-in. So that is why right. with this new board of ed, we are going to um, restart these conversations and take a look to see what we can do. Yeah, and the school district is currently approving that plan. Great. So they're, they're reviewing it for approval. Thank you. Anything else? 
That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Committee member Kripe. Thank you, Mayor. Um, April the 1st was the kickoff of Cherry Blossom Festival here in Essex County, and it was a rainy day, so I know a lot of people didn't get out. But if you have not had a chance even to drive around our neighborhoods with a number of cherry blossom trees that are just, they're gorgeous, please take some time. I was at Branch Book Park yesterday, and I was just going to drive by, but I got my steps in. So <laughs> <laughs> I got out and walked around, and it was just glorious. So please take the time to get out and see some of the beauty that currently nature is providing us. Um, our Maplewood South Orange Volunteer Festival well, Fair was on the 15th, well, sorry, the 29th, and we had a great turnout. We had over 40 organizations that came out, and information to make the community better was available for not only people who were interested in volunteering, but just kind of figuring out and trying to find out what each organization does. So a big thank you goes out to our SOMA Two Towns for All Ages coordinators, uh, Kristen Tyler and Amy Stewart. Um, as a part of the kickoff of, of wellness, the seniors have been doing, they're in the process of creating the more participating in a six-week WISE learning series at the Maplewood Senior Center on Tuesday, starting today, um, and going until May the 9th. It goes from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. I believe lunch is provided, and it's an opportunity for our seniors to learn about issues dealing with aging, including um, our, our concerns about mental health, um, fitness, healthy eating, um, as well as how to not get like taken advantage of with, with scams. Our Repair Cafe is happening on April the 29th. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically an opportunity for us not to throw things in the garbage. If you've got a lamp, a bike, any technology, jewelry, textiles, I'm planning on bringing my sewing machine, because it's been a while, and furniture repair. Please come on out and bring your broken things, and maybe a Maplewood resident or volunteer will be able to fix them for you. If you have any questions, you can contact the Two Towns for All Ages coordinators um, for more information. YouthNet is seeking more board members, and they are in their, they're in their spring fundraising drive, and they're currently using a, a new website called Give Butter. So you can reach out and give to help provide um, after-school enrichment for our, our, our senior, or sorry, our middle school as high school students at giving at somoyouthnet.org. Um, as Ms. Fritzen mentioned, um, this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Springfield Avenue Gazebo, there'll be a memorial bench dedication for Carol Ann Farino, a 17-year-old former resident who was unfortunately murdered on her way home from school back in 1966. The case is still unsolved, and we're hoping that this bench will help people to remember what has happened and potentially get involved in finding out more about what happened to her, encouraging the reopening of the case. Um, softball and baseball opening day is on the 29th. Um, it's a season kickoff and it's been a while, so I'm hoping that people will come out for the parade that's going to happen. And the kids are super excited, especially since field prep has already begun with uh, turf blankets being removed and the overseeding happening. So hopefully very soon we'll start to see more little bodies and uniforms out on the fields. <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be wonderful. Um, the Master Plan Public Workshop is on Saturday, April the 15th, the second one in, in, that we're having in these next two few months from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Hart Center, and this is a chance for anyone in the community to come out and ask questions about the master plan or to give information to the people who are coordinating it and letting them know what's important to our citizens. So please come out and share your voice. And that is it. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the rest of the TC for Ms. Kripe? Ms. Kripe, your sewing machine, does it still work? Yes, it does, and I work it every month when I quilt. Well, if you're going to give it away, we should talk. Yeah. Does what work? Does what work? Huh? I quilt. Uh, yeah. So if you're going to give it away, um, I think my George may want it. Yeah. I've got, I've got two, so I, I don't need two. All I mean, right, needs well, two sewing machines. We'll work something out. We'll talk. <laughs> All right. Committee member DeLuca. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to uh, second uh, Ms. Kripe's uh, description of Branchburg Park. We were up there today. It was just amazing. Um, so get out and see it. It was uh, a beautiful day today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it's crowded even on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, and earlier, you and I were talking about the Wawa resolution that's yes. on. I know you were happy to see it. I forgot to mention that. But you can say if you want to take a no, moment. No, 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 take it. Okay, no, I was just going to um, give the mayor credit for good job there getting that on there and that's um uh hope it works yeah you know we're gonna 
we have an agreement with the Wawa where we'll be, they'll be paying for an overnight police officer there, so that should help a lot. Um, I just wanted to re do a few quick updates. Um, I had the opportunity to attend the basketball dinners uh, last week. Uh, one night was the girls and the second night with the boys and just want to compliment all the coaches and parents for all their work and Coach Ed and Coach Lenny uh, for what they do and, and all the other coaches and the Department of Community Services. It was a great event uh, and it was a potluck so it was a lot of good food. So. Uh, the Maplewood Library Ideas Festival for 2023 is coming up the week of, uh, well, actually two weeks. Uh, it starts April 18th and runs through the 29th. A uh, couple of events are in this building um, and then around town. So check out the Maplewood Library website. Um, on Sunday, April 23rd, we'll be having the Soma Interfaith Holocaust Service, uh, Temple Sherry, Tefil, Israel at 432 Scotland Road in South Orange. 3.15, we'll be doing the rally outside, and 4 o'clock, we'll be doing the service inside. And with um, anti-Semitism on the rise in this country and some of our um, national politicians fueling that flame, um, I think it's really important that we come out and stand strong. And lastly, I just want to give a library update, the construction. Um, we started pouring concrete. Finally, Yay. Uh, we, we've turned from demolition to construction. So we were pouring the, the uh, Monday, the concrete was poured for some of the uh, footings. And then Thursday, we are accepting bids for the audio visual work. So we're moving forward. Terrific. Awesome. And that's it. Thank you, uh, committee member DeLuca. Any questions for Mr. DeLuca? All right, we'll move over to committee member Adams. Thank you. I wasn't going to have a, a report other than talking to Bailey, but I <laughs> wanted to um, mention that uh, April 14th, the school CHS, some, or South Orange Middle School and Maplewood Middle School are um, participating in important awareness um, of uh, trans um, violence. And in doing so, it's a day of silence for um, national student-led demonstration on April 14th. So our schools are participating and um, want to make sure people understand that the Day of Silence reaches hundreds of thousands of students every year, and every April students go through the school day without speaking. Um, they end the day with the breaking of the silence rally and events to share experiences during the protest. So, along with the rising anti-Semitism and hate in general in this country, and thanks to certain uh, national politicians in particular, especially the one who got indicted today, um, you know, we need, to, we need to have these moments. And I think in our community, you know, if we can spotlight them and it goes somewhere outside of our community where they don't spotlight these issues, then, you know, it's important. Um, so that's April 14th. And then, Lastly, I just wanted to thank you, Bailey, for um, everything you've done uh, while you've been here. You've shepherded us, uh, even being relatively new yourself, shepherded us through some turmoil, not just for COVID, but just what's gone on in town hall with our administrator and all these things that you just stepped up and kind of kept us afloat. So that did not go unnoticed, um, and we we're going to miss you. But we'll all be at your wedding. <laughs> we're going to crash the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I think Even we should if we're crash not the wedding. <laughs> yeah, we're not invited. You can just we're be just nice go. and get an invitation. <laughs> she told us where it is. So anyway, that's my report. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Committee Member Adams. Any questions for Committee Member Adams? Thank you for your report. Uh, I also have a short report because others have covered uh, a lot of the topics I was going to cover. That's the beauty of going last. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just will repeat a couple of things because I think they're important. Um, our health officer, Candace Davenport, uh, spoke about the uh, wellness campaign that we have rolled out. Uh, we are rebranding Walk with the Mayor so that it's Walk with the Mayor and the TC so that everybody's included. And uh, we are going to add uh, some Saturday dates because we heard from folks who said that they couldn't make the Sunday. Um, to church, 
but I better see those people on Saturday. <laughs> um, let's see how that pans out. Are you out. doing Saturday and Sunday every weekend? Is Not every weekend, but we're going to add some dates there. Yeah, the calendar the is pretty, pretty packed already, and we have a lot of community events coming up. Um, I do also, as committee member Kripe highlighted, the master plan public engagement sessions. There is another one coming up on Saturday, April 15th from 10 to 12 in person at DeHart Community Center. Please, please engage in the master plan. Uh, we've, we've seen some uh, social media threads about, you know, um, concerns that some residents have had about a house here or there and how it's being um, the construction and is it to code and what about zoning and what are the township's powers all of these things are the master plan, and we are adopting a new one, a new guide, a new handbook. Uh, so be part of that conversation. We have a lot of architects and zoning people and uh, uh, historic preservation folks. We have a lot of experts in town, and we want to see you, and we want to hear from you. Uh, I also want to address, some have said that, you know, we haven't done sufficient public engagement. I think we could do more in terms of our marketing of our master plan engagement sessions, but the, the session on Saturday, April 15th at 10 a.m. at DeHart Community Center uh, follows the business owner meetings that were done in person on two occasions, March 22nd and March 30th. Seniors had another in person on March 29th. Artists and arts organizations are having their own session. Uh, House of Worship leaders are having uh, their own stakeholder meeting. And neighborhood associations are also, all of our neighborhood associations are being engaged as well. So we are getting out there. Um, you know, it's tough getting to everyone, uh, but we are getting out there. We're also not interested in uh, a master plan process that takes three years. Uh, so we're not gonna do that either. And I don't think that that's necessary. So, um, that's the master plan. We uh, brought the Arts Council back. We had our first meeting in a really long time. Uh, I don't remember when that was, last week or something. Um, and we were really excited. We have a very thoughtful and passionate new cultural, arts and cultural affairs manager, Sally Unsworth, who brings to the table significant expertise in, in arts management and arts policy. And we're really excited. The council's really excited in working with her and our uh, starting to talk about important things, not just arts programming, but also facility utilization and also bigger picture zoning 30, you know, zoning out, zooming out 30,000 feet above the ground to talk about uh, an equity plan, an arts equity plan. Uh, and as I've reported before, uh, arts and culture is an element in our forthcoming master plan. That's unusual, not something most municipalities do, but we're doing it because that's who we are in Maplewood. So that's exciting. And lastly, I want to dovetail on committee member uh, Adams' remarks about April 14th being a day of silence uh, to, to honor, uh, to stand in support with our trans and non-binary uh, community. Trans Day, Trans Day of Visibility was last Friday, and I uh, and committee member DeLuca attended a very powerful and moving uh, walkout that, this, that CHS Spectrum Club and CHS Students for Justice organized themselves. Student-led, student-driven, but they did ask some adults to be present, and I was asked to give remarks, and I gave remarks from the heart. Um, I'm really concerned. I'm not being dramatic, but I'm really concerned. I'm concerned that the national hate groups and the things that are happening in other parts of the country attacking our trans youth are starting to seep into our community. We had, uh, we had some parents the other night at a school board meeting who were talking, who displayed transphobia, who talked about maybe our students should not be learning about LGBTQ folks. Maybe we are grooming students. 
Maybe trans persons aren't real. That's happening in Maplewood, South Orange. I want us to pay attention, and I want us to engage. We will be engaging a lot. In, during Pride Month, we're going to be doing uh, not just the fun stuff, but also the serious stuff. We're going to talk about uh, the trans experience. We're going to hear from people. Um, and we also need to make more supports available through the township, mental health support, uh, and do whatever we can in terms of local legislation to further support our trans community. Um, I had a parent in my office not too long ago who, um, who really concerned me. And uh, I would say, and I don't say this lightly, who also got me very alarmed. And we are a very open campus here in the township of Maplewood. And the school is a very open campus, our schools. Um, we have to support our trans youth. Absolutely. And we have to stand with them. And I ask as low-hanging fruit, and I commend committee member DeLuca for doing it. This is performative, but it's important. Please, us and everyone out there, Please add your pronouns to your email signature. It's important. It's another sign of inclusion. It's another message. Uh, we have to do everything that we can do, the easy stuff like that and the harder stuff that I've been talking about. So um, I'm very, very concerned. I have uh, trans family members, and I know a lot of students in this community who reach out to me confidentially about their fear. And all they're trying to do is live like the rest of us are living openly, being who they are. Uh, so let's stay engaged, let's pay attention, and let's do everything that we can because these are our kids. This is our community and we have to protect them all. That is my report. Now, we'll move over to our consent agenda. I will move items 14A through uh, 14P, like Peter, of the consent agenda. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Greit? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Sengel? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. This brings us to our second public comment for any subject matter. Any members of the public with us? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment, and I move that we adjourn and meet again on Tuesday, April 18th. Second. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Great? Yes. Mr. DeLuca? Yes. Single? Yes. Mayor Daffis? Yes. Thank you, and good evening. And again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Good evening.